Hello, my fellow gnomes, and welcome back to episode six, I believe this is. Now, in the last episode, we had a look at functions. We created some of our own, and we also talked about how the print command is actually a function itself. And we're going to explore some more uh, Roblox-made functions that we can use. So we're going to head into our ball script, uh, make sure it's enabled if it isn't. And right down here, instead of changing the position of the ball, what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new part. Now how we create a new part, let's delete this line, is we use a function called instance.new. Okay, so instance.new open and close brackets and what we type in here is the name of the thing or the instance that we want to create. So we want to add in a new part, okay? So it's going to be auto suggested for us, we can press enter, it'll auto complete and we get part there with the quotation marks. So now we've created a part um, but it doesn't really properly exist. I mean we've created it but we haven't uh, we haven't placed it into the workspace or anything. We've kind of just created it in a void. So if we want to change some properties to it, place it in the workspace and so on, uh, what we actually need to do is need to save it to a variable. So we'll say uh, new ball equals instance dot new. So whereas this variable up here refers to the object that's currently inside workspace. Uh, this refers to an entirely new object we're creating. So then on the next line, let's give it some properties. So new ball, and let's set the shape of it first of all. And we'll set the shape to, we'll use something called an enum. Now we'll talk about this later, I think, but uh, enum dot uh, shape, or is it part type dot Ball. There we go, enum.parttype.ball. So that'll make it into a spherical shape. Um, we could change some more properties if we want. We could even change the color of it. How about new ball dot brick color equals brick color dot blue. Okay, so we can press enter. I'll auto complete. I will notice uh, blue, that's actually kind of a, uh, a function in of itself, although we won't go into that, I don't think, right now. So anyway, we've created these properties. There's one final thing we need to do, which is place this new object into the workspace. So new ball dot parent equals workspace. So now when we run this game, we're going to see that ball is going to drop and then a new blue ball has appeared sort of in the distance over there. Uh, that's not really where we want it, is it? We want it to appear over here in our game world. So back into the script, and we need to make use of that original position variable. So we'll create a new line just above where we set the parent, and we'll say uh, new ball dot position, and we'll set that to the original position. So now when we run, we should hopefully see the ball appearing just above. There we go. And we're having a load of blue balls appear every three seconds. <laughs> so if I click play and I join the game now, uh, we're going to see uh, we've, <laughs> we've got some blue balls now. Uh, there we go. So uh, these are going to keep filling up the pitch. Every three seconds, a brand new part is going to appear. And we can... Uh, dribble about with these if we want. We've still got the original ball over there and we've, we've got a lot of blue balls now. So uh, how about if we want to remove some of these instead? Because uh, I might want, not want all of these uh, clogging up the pitch like this. It's going to be very difficult to play soon with so many of them. So let's hit stop back into our script. After we've created the part, uh, let's wait uh, two seconds, let's say. And oh, I accidentally created a hash, new line. And this time I'm going to type new ball again. But instead of typing dot to access its properties, I'm actually going to type a colon. Okay, so colon. 
and this time you'll see I've got some new suggestions but these ones have actually got uh, that little purple or pinky box next to it and that's because these are all functions now and there's loads of things here but the one that we're going to use is destroy that's essentially like a delete function which will remove the object from the world uh, we don't probably don't need that weight at the beginning anymore so let's remove that and now when we run the game we could play but we'll just run we should notice a blue ball appears and after two seconds it's removed and then a new part is created and added again so we're not changing the position of it anymore like we were last time we're creating a brand new part so i'll hit stop and then back into the script now it doesn't really make sense to create a brand new part each time it would probably be easier to just create a copy of it so what we can do is we could clone the existing ball seen as we already have this ball that we know we want to use uh, in our script we can uh, let's remove all of this we can say uh, ball and then colon and we'll access a function called clone that creates a copy now again uh, the copy doesn't exist in workspace it just exists sort of in the void so we'll create a variable for it um, we'll call it the clone ball equals so a variable for the object and then we'll set some properties for it, it this clone is going to have all the properties of the last one but it just won't have a parent so clone ball dot parent equals workspace then let's just uh, wait one second this time and then we'll create a new copy so we're going to end up with a lot of footballs here let's click play joining with our character why not and now we should see oh, we already have a giant stack of balls and <laughs> you see they're appearing inside of each other so if i don't do anything and you'll notice we're going to end up with a lot of footballs here <laughs> So this is a little bit chaotic uh, because clone is a very powerful uh, command. So you can see they're appearing uh, all kind of all over the place now. And yeah, we've not really got any room to play football anymore. But uh, there we go. So that's a few um, of the Roblox functions that we can use. There's uh, loads more available and we'll explore a few more as we go through this series. But I think that brings us to the end of this episode. And in the next one, I think we'll probably explore something called events. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye!